Good morning, seventh graders. Welcome to our technology class. This is week 38. So let's see a few things that I wanted to tell you guys. Uh, this week is going to be our last lesson that will count towards the fourth quarter. Next week, we will have a lesson. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that because it will next week we will have a lesson. But the thing about it is that it will count as a bonus or an extra credit, meaning that uh, it's optional. Like if you need to boost up your grade and you would like to do it, I'll be adding on points to your lowest grade. But this week is definitely you have to do the assignment. It does. It's uh, mandatory, meaning that it counts um, as a regular assignment. So the reason I'm doing that next week is because uh, the 11th is the last day of the quarter. And I realized that uh, you know, there's a lot going on. I'm sure you have a lot of things to finish up and also not enough time to really <clears throat> have you do a full coding thing, um, but you may have time. And so that's why I wanted to just put it out there for the kids who had time to do it. Um, I was just thought if you want to spend a little extra time and get extra credit. So that's how we're going to do it. And then we'll end the year the following week if you want to send me the link to any of your projects that you've worked on, any of the coding projects, I want to put together a fun video just showing everybody's work. So that way we can just celebrate and watch that. Because um, we would normally do that if we were together anyways. So that's pretty much our plan for the next uh, remainder of the school year. So this week, I advise you to please do number seven, which we're going to go through together. And anything that you did not do, please send it in. So I know that it is 10 points off every week, but it's better to get, you know, a 70 than get a zero, right? Even if you were a couple of weeks late, it's always better to at least do it and take the late points than to take a zero. So that's what that's really what our plan is here. Uh, again, you're welcome to come in and work on anything if you need to catch up. Uh, definitely do that this week. Uh, don't wait until it's the day before and then you're like really going crazy, right? Okay, so I'm going to shut my video off and we're going to go right into, um, this is activity seven, the pattern maker, okay? So I think this one, you guys will have fun with this one. Hey, welcome to Scratch Fashion and Design. Today, you'll create a program that designs patterns. You'll be able to test the patterns you create on things like clothing, furniture, or even wallpaper. In doing this, you'll learn about a computer science concept, procedures. A procedure combines many instructions into one task or block. The procedure can then be called to run that set of instructions whenever needed. In Scratch, you create a procedure by making a block. For example, you could combine a set of instructions into a dance procedure. When this code runs, it runs the glide block, then calls the procedure. All of the code for this procedure runs before moving on to the next glide block. Alternatively, you code the same example without procedures like this. This requires a lot more time and effort. Not only that, but look at how much prettier the code looks when you use a procedure. Rather than copying a bunch of code to make the sprite dance, it's all placed into a procedure that you can call whenever needed. Procedures allow you to simplify common actions. You can then create code that looks good, is much easier to read, and takes less time to create. Now it's your turn. Click the Pattern Maker Starter Project link once you've done that, come back to this page on the CS First tab and click the green next arrow to move on to the next video. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up our starter project. So we're gonna to wanna to save it. Obviously we've been doing this now for quite some time. Hopefully you remember what to do every week. So rename it, put your name. Lesson number seven, pattern maker, and then file save now. So now at least we have a good, uh, good start and it's saved. In this video, you'll learn how to use the print prepare procedure in your starter project to print a pattern. Using the print prepare procedure moves the sprite across a specified distance. When the sprite reaches the edge of the stage, it starts again one row up at the left side of the stage. To use the procedure, you'll need to call it. 
That means you tell the computer to follow the list of tasks contained in one procedure at a specific point in your code. Go to the More Blocks menu, drag out the Print Prepare block, and place it under the Repeat Until loop that was included in your starter project. Enter the number 40 in each of the two value spaces. These numbers set the distances the sprites move horizontally and vertically. To run the code, press the 1 key. The sprite moves across and up the stage. However, it doesn't create a pattern. That's because the procedure moves the sprite. It doesn't make it stamp. To stamp the sprite, go to the Pen menu and drag out the Stamp block and place it under the Print Prepare block. Press 1, and the sprite will move across the screen and print a copy of itself as it travels. Awesome! But the pattern only prints once. Nothing happens if you press the 1 key a second time. That's okay. In the next video, you'll learn how to create a procedure to reset the stage, allowing the user to reprint the pattern. Now it's your turn. Click on the More Blocks menu and drag the Print Prepare block into the Repeat Until loop. Select the Pen menu and add a stamp block under the Print Prepare procedure. Press 1 to see the code print a set of stamps once. Then move on to the next video to learn how to make the pattern print multiple times. Okay, so let's see if we can add this in. So here we go. We have our pattern here. So we're just completing the code that's nice. They've already started some code for us. So let's go in here and we're going to add the print prepare block. So that's in my blocks. Get the print prepare. Oh my God, print prepare. And then put in 40. And then let's add in the stamp block. So that's going to be under pen, add in the stamp block, and then let's try it out. So when I press the number one, I can see that the pattern shows up, okay? Ooh, it looks so lovely, okay. Oh, I wonder if they had any other, oh, they do have other patterns that you guys can choose from. So right now I have the zebra pattern, but you guys can look through here. I knew they had so many of them. So if you want to play around with that, go right ahead. Okay, I'm going to put the next video. In this video, you'll create a procedure to reset <coughs> the pattern printer so it is ready to print again when the one key is pressed. The code stack that does this is already included in the starter project. This code has quite a few steps, but essentially it just clears the pattern and prepares the project to start over. To start, turn this code into a procedure that can be called at any time to reset the project. Remember, a procedure is a set of instructions that performs a task. A procedure can be called at any point in the program to carry out that set of instructions. From the More Blocks menu, select Make a Block. Name this block something that describes what the block will do, like Reset Project. Click OK. This automatically adds a define block to your scripting area. Drag the define block onto the code that resets the pattern. You now have a procedure that resets the pattern, but to use it, you'll need to call it by adding the new block you created to the start of the key press events. Now it's your turn. Make a block called reset project. Add the define block to the code stack that clears the pattern. Place the newly created reset project block under the when one key press block. In the next video, you'll learn how to adjust the size and spacing of your printed pattern and change the sprite used to make the pattern. Okay, so let's go and create this block. So let's go to my blocks, make a block. We're calling this reset project. Okay. Now we're at, we have that there. Now we're getting the reset project and putting it in there. So that way every time it will reset the project. And then we're adding this to the broadcast um, stop show section. So that's right over here. So it's kind of nice that they had a lot of this code in for us. So now there we go. We have our pattern. And then, uh, oh, I have to press one, sorry. Okay. Okay, so again, oh, very nice looking. Um, again, let me see. 
Um, let's try and see. Here, let me put on the next one. In this video, you'll learn how to adjust the size and spacing of your printed pattern and change the sprite used to make the pattern. When a procedure is called, it can send a value. These values are called parameters. For example, the print prepare procedure has two parameters called horizontal space and vertical space. If you adjust the values in the print prepare block and run the code, you'll see that the spacing of the pattern changes. Making the first value larger increases the horizontal space between the stamps. Making the second value larger increases the vertical space between the stamps. Experiment with these values until you like the spacing of your pattern. Now that you understand how parameters work, you're going to add another parameter to the print prepare procedure. Right click on the define print prepare block and choose edit from the menu. Then click the button add number input. Type the word size in this block. Click OK. The define print prepare block now has an extra parameter called size. And the print prepare block in the code now has a third parameter value. However, if you run the code, nothing new happens. The parameter for size exists, but you also need to instruct the define block how to use that parameter. Click the looks menu, select the set size to block, and place it under the define block. Then drag the size parameter into the set size to block. Now your code will automatically set the size of the sprite to the specifications in the print prepare block. Test your code. It creates a pattern with tiny versions of the sprite because the size parameter is set to 1. Make this parameter a larger number to stamp bigger sprites. Experiment with the horizontal, vertical, and size parameters until you get a pattern you like. Using a procedure like Print Prepare makes it easy to experiment with lots of different values and create something that you like. Imagine how long it would take to paint each of these different versions of the pattern individually if you didn't know how to create them using computer science. Once again, knowing a little computer science provides you with a way to easily envision your creation. You can also reuse the print prepare procedure to build an entirely new pattern quite easily. To do this, duplicate the code stack, change the key press event, add a new costume, and set the switch costume block to that new costume. The print prepare procedure allows you to change the size of the sprite and the horizontal and vertical spacing of the new pattern without changing your original pattern. Now it's your turn. Right click and edit the defined print prepare block, click the options button, and add sizing and space parameters. Add a set size block to the define print parameter code and add the size parameter to it. Experiment with different parameter values until you have a pattern you like. You can also choose to duplicate the code and use it to create an entirely new pattern. Hmm, so this is gonna be fun. So let's go and let's start with right clicking. So let's go into our button here um, and let's right click, let's click edit. We wanna add an input and so we're calling this size. Okay. Uh, then if you remember what we wanted to do is go in and add size to the set size block. So let's put a set size block into the code. So let's do that first. So I believe that would be under looks, set size block. Then we're going to add size to the set size block. So go into my blocks. Um, we want size in there. Okay. So now, if you remember, um, we can experiment with the values. So the values are all here. It's at uh, 45. Okay, so now if I stop this and I press one, I have a little bit of a different looking pattern. Let me try a different one, 200. 
Whoa, <laughs> that's crazy. Let's try a different one. Uh, five. Oh, interesting. Huh. Not as colorful, that's for sure. So uh, interesting, right? That I can change the pattern. Okay, so the other thing is that you can also change the costume of the pattern maker. So I think I was showing you this before, if I go in here and maybe I'm like, oh, I think I wanna try this one. Um, I can also try this one um, in there. So let me see now, Let's try that one. Oh, I'm gonna make it, a, you can't really see, it doesn't show up too well. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Pretty, ooh, nice. So you guys can play around with this. There were a bunch of costumes in here that you can obviously go ahead and play around with. If you want to, oh, let me see what they have. Oh, they have a flower one, another flower one. Oh, that's pretty. Plaid, polka dots, splatters, stripes. So have fun with it, really. <laughs> have fun with it. Here's this one. Woo, look at that pattern. Um, so you can play around with it and see what you can create. Let's take a look at the add-ons and let's see what they have for this Congratulations one. Congratulations on coding an awesome computer science project. There's no limit to the ideas and creativity you can add to your project. Let the user pick the color of the pattern with color selector. Create a unique effect by alternating between patterns with alternating patterns. In Soundtrack, add music to your project. Get ideas for how you can take it further by checking out some other CS First Club members' projects. What will you create? To continue to create and explore after today's club is over, you can access Scratch and CS First from any computer that has access to the internet. Have fun creating, customizing, and making this project your own. Hmm. So let's see. So um, these are all going to be bonuses, but if you want to do color selector, in this add -on, if you want to do alternating patterns, that hey, could be interesting. My name is Kumar, and I'm um, going to take. You could add a soundtrack. On, you'll program the stage to play so maybe music. Let's, let's try this one. This video won't tell you all of the steps but it will give you some ideas for how to program it. To add music, click the Sounds tab, then choose Sound from Library. Preview the sounds. To use the sound in your program, add a play sound block and select the sound you chose from the drop-down menu. Now it's your turn. Program the stage to play music when it's clicked. Okay, so let's try and do that. So let's go in and let's try and see. We can click on the stage and then we can go into sound. We can choose a sound that we want. Um, use this one. So again, you can really go in here and go crazy. There's so many different sounds that you might want to pick. Whoops, I just accidentally clicked on one that I didn't exactly even listen to. Let me get some, let me see, I can find something. Uh, I'm looking for something. Um, no. No. See if I could find a fun song. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know you guys always like that one.
Okay, for the sake of, I'm just gonna pick this one. So now I'm going back in, I'm choosing the dance around. And then for the event, when the stage is clicked, it'll play that sound. Okay, so now press my number one, press my stage. And then it will start to play the music. But at least it adds a little bit more entertainment to the whole thing, right? Let me make sure I do file save now. So then that way I don't lose it. Okay, so you what you really have to do for yours is just do the code to add in the pattern. So make sure you finish all of this code and play around with the patterns. And then any of the add-ons, those will just count as five points each, okay? So that way you can get some bonus points on this. But have fun with it. <coughs> It'll be fun to see all of the patterns and, <coughs> excuse me, add some music, right? and make it a little bit entertaining. So it's like we're kind of watching your, your pattern maker go. So have fun with it. And um, don't forget, email me, let me know which add-ons you did so I could give you the bonus for it. Uh, just send me the link. And then you could start also sending me the links to the ones that you want me to share in the upcoming videos um, with your classmates, okay? All right, guys, have fun with this. Uh, I know we're, we only have, this is really our last one that's counting. Um, and then next week will be the bonus one, but um, have fun. I hope that you guys enjoyed learning coding this year. All right, we'll see you guys.